Welcome back guys, we're back again with another tutorial. This time we're going to be showing how to use your Multicraft control panel. So here we're going to be using Seekhost. If you don't already, I would recommend it. Um, really good packages, very easy to configure and use. So you've done the first steps and you've actually bought your package. Now if you are using Seekhost, all you've got to do here is actually click on the active package that you do have and then just head down to Multicraft here. So using your email and then the password that's generated, unless you've already changed it yourself, you just log into your Multicraft control panel panel you will be sent an email if you have just bought the server and you're going to be brought to your server list here I've got three so let's say the test one is the one that I've just bought we're going to click on it and it's going to bring us up to our multicraft control panel from here you can sort pretty much everything with your server uh, from plugins to mods checking what's going on in, in chat and console um, so we're going to be going through some of these options now so on the main page that you get brought up to, you've got the name of the server, and if you want to change it, you just head down to name here, and you can change it to whatever name you want. It will then appear on the top. Underneath, we've got our start, stop, restart, and kill button. Um, this will, of course, start the server, stop the server, restart the server, or kill the server. So now you come down, of course, we've already said this is the server name. You can just change that by um, just obviously changing the text, and after changing it, you hit save, and it will change your server name. Underneath that, we've got how many player slots you've got allocated, and then the status, which will tell you um, how many players you've actually got online at this particular time. So five players are playing, it would say five out of 24. For the IP, this is the IP and the port that you will use to connect to your server. So when you actually want to connect, um, you know, let's say if you haven't set up a domain first, you connect with the IP first for the address and then the port. For your world name, this will be the name of the current world that you're going to load up. If you want multiple worlds, you just got to change the name. So um, if I've got a world called New One and I want to change it, to a new brand new world I'll do a new two and we'll save it as two different files um, and you can actually load them back up using the FTP file access and we have got more in-depth videos on all of these points here um, we should be able to check out on this in seeker host knowledge base so don't worry if you've changed the name of this and then you can't find your old world it hasn't been deleted we st you still have the file you've just got to open it back up when we come down to domain here you can choose a different domain for people to join on so they don't have to use the IP address um, I've just changed mine to SMP and then we got .seekerhostservers.com and that's what they'll use to actually join on. This doesn't include the port number. If you're joining on Bedrock, you'll still need the port number. Uh, if you're on Java, all you'll need is the domain and you'll be able to join. For server jar, this is where you pick what type of game mode you want. So uh, right at the top, we've got the default, um, which is Java. We've got optimized Minecraft server, which is um, sort of like optimized biomes. Trees grow larger, um, biomes are slightly larger, etc. Underneath that, we got the bedrock server. So if you do want to run an official bedrock server, um, you're going to hit that option. And underneath here, we've got many, many uh, Java different versions or different jars here so we've got the craft bucket anywhere from 1.1 to 1.16 um, you can upload custom jar files if you want uh, we've got forge paper spigot um, and of course all the versions of vanilla minecraft as well so you choose the one that works best for you uh, for this particular time I've, cho I've chosen spigot so if we head down to our advanced options here it's going to show us how, how much memory or ram we've got allocated here and um, we've got the unauthorized kick delay key um, which was tell you how many after how many milliseconds kick a player without access. We've got the auto save option here, which will just automatically save um, your game. And yeah, as it says here, regularly save your game onto the disc. And then you can choose whether you want it to announce it. So if you untick this, it won't tell people in game that the game's been saved. If you do leave it ticked um, in game, it will say game is now saving and it will then save the game. Now, if we go down one further to permissions, it's going to show us some more options here. We've got server visibility. Um, and you can choose whether you want default role owner only or user with roles only and this will be your visibility to the minecraft server list default role is the role that the player is going to get as soon as they join onto your server of course if you've got a whitelist they won't actually be allowed onto your server anyway but when they will be allowed this is the role they will get so the role that players will get if their ip matches another player in game will be guest of course you can actually change this to anything else i tend to leave this on guest and it comes as default um just in case you are querying why one player is logging in on uh, this or sorry two players of logging in on the same IP address. So for the cheat role, this is the role that people can actually access the cheats on or commands, um, and you can choose here out of any of these. It comes as default on moderator, and I'd also suggest that. So if you've changed anything on there at this point, just hit save and it will save all your file. Um, and it will come up with a little green message just tell you that you've yeah saved your server settings. 
So now that we've gone through the main page, let's go on the left hand side and you can see you've got a little chat option here. So here it's going to show you what's going on on your server. So anything from the in-game chats um, to who's connected and disconnected. Um, and it will also tell you other stuff. If you have plugins, anti-cheat plugins, it will tell you um, why they were uh, disconnected with a reason. So come back out to console and in a similar way, this will basically tell you everything that's going on in your server in a much more detailed way. As you can see now, it's loading up a load of plugins that I already have installed in here. Um, and it will tell you everything that's going on. You can also run commands through the uh, chat bar here, just sort of like you would do in game. However, you can actually do this through the chat bar. So if I wanted to check what plugins I'll, um, I have, I'll just type in plugins, no need for a forward slash. Uh, you can just do it all through here. And as you can see, we've now been told Lucky Perms, Bycraft, Vault Essentials, Iridium, Skyblock. So those are just the ones that I've got uploaded. Um, also, you can see whether stuff, uh, whether you're getting warnings for anything, something's not working, it will all come up on your console. And you can do pretty much every command that you can do in game, you know, from changing the game mode, OPing or DOPing people, because this will be the only place that you'll actually be able to OP yourself when you first start. So, you know, when you first start the game, you'll have to do an OP and then your gamer tag, uh, press end, and then that'll actually OP you and give you operator status on the server itself. Now if we head down to players, this will give you the players that are actively on your server or have been on your server. It will give you how many pages, etc. and their IPs uh, when they were last seen and their default roles. Um, and of course their names here if you do actually want to go more into it. So you might want to check somebody on here. Um, obviously I would have blurred out their details on the bottom, but you can check what role they have. Um, you know, you can assign one to user, you can change their role through here, so you can change it from default role to a moderator if you so wish. Um, and you can also choose whether they're banned through here. Obviously you can do this on your console as well, you can just do a ban with a username or a ban IP with their IP. Now of course if you actually wanted to find out their IP you would use this page because underneath here it tells you their IP and their previous IPs as well. So you can do a ban IP on your console and it will completely ban their IP address from ever logging onto your server again. If it's just an easy ban just use this and you can change this to true and you can ban that player. Once you've finished that, just hit save and come back. So if your server settings, the top one is your main one. So that is actually your settings for the whole server. You can change everything in here. And we do have more detailed videos of this if you want to check them out, but only even from allow flying, um, you know, you can input your level seed here. If you want to start up a new world with a new level seed, um, player versus player and all that sort of stuff, you can all change through here. Um, and then once you finish, just hit save and then back out. Underneath here, you're going to see that we're going to have a lot more folders. This is what's going to generate as you open plugins. So for instance, for the essential plugin, it's also got the essentials um, YML. It's got the TPR, the worth YML. Um, and this is also stuff that you can change once you are running plugins. Let's say I wanted to change the... Um, where are we? Let's come down to worth. So the YML for how much stuff is worth on essentials in the same way as the server settings. We just come on here. However, it looks a little bit different and you can change stuff. So you can change the actual worth of stuff on um, that particular plugin. Let's say the stone button is $6, but you wanted to change that to $2. You're just going to hit save and you've now saved uh, your new configuration for that particular plugin. Now, if you actually do want to install plugins, you just come down one more to the plugin list. So we're on the main page here and all you've actually got to do is just change what version you're playing so if you're playing spigot you would choose that and um, you can go through categories here to see what sort of categories that you might want to search for or you can just use the search bar here and just type what you want to find so let's say you actually want to download a plugin um, for this instance we'll just use the capture one uh, stop bots logging onto your server if you do actually want to find out more information you just go to the link here and it'll give you much more information so it'll actually be the source of the plugin however if you just want to install it straight onto your uh, server you're just going to hit install just of course make sure it's the correct version um, so they will either pop up with a picture on the right here if they don't have um, a server compatibility one here um, just click onto the plugin page and it will show you exactly what server it's compatible for so we hit install if we want it and then once it's installed we just back out if you do want to check what plugins you have got currently installed you just got to head back to the button here which says currently installed and you can see um, we've got iridium skyblock and that is currently installed here if you wanted to get rid of it just tap on the uh, plugin itself and just head down and disable it and then remove it However, if you are going to be adding or removing plugins, I always suggest stopping your server first and actually making sure it's properly stopped and then changing uh, plugins configurations. It's not too bad if you restart it after, um, although you can also stop your server. However, especially with plugins and files being swapped over, I do thoroughly recommend actually stopping it first and then starting it back up once you've transferred everything over. Local plugins, this will show you a list of the plugins that you've downloaded locally or uploaded to your server rather, and these are all the jars here. If you want to remove them, you can simply 
hit the remove button and it will remove whatever jar that you wanted to. So if you actually wanted to upload a custom jar for a plugin um, or anything like that, you would head down to your FTP file access. I would have blurred my information out, but this is also the information that you can use to log on to FileZilla if you do use that um, to share files over. Um, and it's your FTP address, your port, your username, and of course the password. Um, it's first generated to you through email. However, if you've changed it, which I do recommend changing it to one that you're going to remember, um, you can obviously log in with that one. Here on the FTP file access is going to show you all the files on your actual server. So anything from the backups, which are saved as zips, um, to again the plugins, um, the jars, uh, the worlds that you've got loaded. So it will load up the nether. Um, the end and a the actual world itself and then we'll do that for every world that you do have You can access the YMLs here and you can also edit them using the handy edit button here If you do so wish to do it that way And if you are looking to upload a plugin that you've downloaded externally All you got to do is just head over to your plugins folder here and you just got to go to upload And then just choose the file by clicking that and then selecting the plugin then submit and you have now downloaded your plugin So once you've downloaded and started back your server if you check in your local plugins That's where you're going to find it so down to setup now So if we click that the link you're going to see that we've got the option to clean mod, mod directory and plugins Delete all server files and run setup on every server start now I wouldn't check this unless you wanted to clear or delete the files every time you start the server um, Delete all server files, would, I'd only use if you're really going to clear out everything so you know you've had enough and you're just going to start completely over from fresh. Um, I'd check the delete all files, um, you put, pop your password in and it will clean all your mods and directories um, and it will delete all server files. Of course you don't actually have to check this, you can just uh, clean the mods and plugins. So I've selected clean all mods and plugins and you can see it's given us the option that that's what we're going to do. We're going to delete all files, no, run on every server, restart, no. Now this will take place once you start your server back up, however if you decided that that's the wrong choice you don't actually want to do that, you just hit the, can uh, the cancel setup button. So we're going to head down to backup now and when we hit that link, uh, that link we're going to be brought to this page here. This is where we can create a backup um, we can restore our backup as well and as you can see if you have an automatic backup system here um, it, will, it will tell you when it was last created of course if you do want to do that just check out the Seekerhost knowledge base website um, because we'll show you exactly how to do an automatic backup system so we've gone through everything in files and we're going to head to advanced now um, you can come down to commands and you can either create your own commands um, check the commands that we have on the server or create default commands again I'm not going to go heavily into each one of these we're just going to go a quick overview just uh, for you to be able to understand uh, what you're able to do on here um, but you can in fact create commands um, if I hit this now we'll just have a quick look you can choose the name uh, role required prerequisite the chat response and what you're going to run of course with helpful buttons here just so it actually tells you what to do you can check or change some of the existing commands already so if i go to restart here you can actually change what role um, can use it so you can actually change it to user or guest however i'll probably wouldn't recommend that and so they'll be able to restart at any time they like schedule tasks we do have a more in-depth video on this and you can do anything from an automatic backup system um, you can create your own save times um, you can either run stuff to tell people on the server, different messages, you know, every however long. So you, lots of different options you can do on here just by creating a new task and then choosing um, at a scheduled time what's going to happen. And just to show you some of the commands that you can actually run on this, you know, anything from admin say, so they can say stuff on the server, creating backups, give an item to a player, stop if empty, you can restart the server. If you do create one, just hit create and then it will be back on your list on scheduled tasks here and you'll be able to check on it and see when it was last run, um, if it was ever run, if it's rescheduled. So this is where you can search what users that you have potentially added on here. Maybe you've got some moderators that you want to be able to access um, the multi-craft page and actually, you know, do some stuff, configure it, etc. This is where you're going to check and see that they're a user. Along the bottom of the page, you're going to be able to see how much CPU you're currently using and how much memory you're currently using on your server as well. And it will give you the connected players. Um, if you've got no connected players at the moment, it will tell you no players online. So if you've got multiple servers, just hit the servers button here and it will list them all here and you'll be able to go seamlessly through one to the other. If you head over to profile here, it will, uh, it will let you change to a new password. So once the password that's generated has been sent to you, you might want to make it a little bit easier or for you to remember. You just got to come on here, use the password they give to you and then put in the new password that you want and hit save. 
So if you need some support on the server, helpful people here at Seekerhost will be available. You just hit the support button over here and it's going to bring you over to a ticket that you can open. Um, you can just tell them exactly what's going on. Um, you can attach files if you want to, if it's going to be showing anything else on there that might help them. And you're going to hit submit. And of course, if not, we do have the live help here. So you can in fact press the button and just start a ticket or a quick live chat um, and they can help you out. If they can't help you out there, they'll be able to help you out with the tickets. So lots of support available. So thanks for watching, guys. For any more videos like this, just check out the Seeker Host Knowledge Base and, of course, my channel. Bye-bye.